Let's start. OK. <clears throat> Last lecture, we considered with you some problems. Yeah? And uh, I considered with you two proofs of the fact that interval, closed interval 0, 1, or any other interval, cannot be represented as a countable union of closed sets. Of course, we suppose that all of them are non-empty. Otherwise, this representation is trivial, n from 1 to infinity. <coughs> so if n are closed sets, I'd like to recall that by this sim symbol, we denote family of all closed sets on the line, or maybe in metric space. And we suppose that if n, uh, if n is not empty. If n is not empty. <coughs> so we consider it with you two proofs. But now I want to give you one more proof. In my opinion, this proof is, is the most elegant. And uh, we will use here bare theorem and the categorical argument. So I'd like to recall for <coughs> newcomers that what is the no, indeed, we understand, understand this with you from the course of metric spaces that uh, the set uh, A. The set A is rarest set, or it is the same as nowhere, nowhere dense set. If you have the following, <coughs> if interior of closure of A is empty, for example, singleton, or finite union of singletons, it is the same. It is the same as we proved with you if exterior <coughs> of A is everywhere dense in corresponding metric space. So. Ah, and uh, definition, I'd like to recall you, that we say that A is of the first category, first category if, <coughs> if A is union finite or countable union uh, of rare sets, of rare sets, A and of all them are rare sets. Important, one of the basic theorems uh, in analysis, Bayer theorem. Bayer theorem, also we prove this with, with you, this theorem. Bayer's theorem says that if X uh, is complete metric space, complete metric space, metric space, then this X is of the second category, second category in itself, itself. Now, I don't want to discuss again in the previous lecture. We understood what does it mean that second category in itself. In more white space, it may be uh, first category. What is more, it may be rarest set. Now look, uh, definitely <coughs> this interval uh, is uh, complete since it's compact. Yeah, this compact interval. So we have it is com uh, complete. And uh, if uh, I want, so this is the third proof. This is third proof. And in this third proof, uh, I, I try to use bare theorem. And if all of them have, uh, these sets have empty interior, have empty interior, of course, this decomposition is impossible, yeah? Since then we will have, if they are closed, if they have empty interior, then it will mean that this set of the first category, but definitely this is of the second category. But if set is closed, it's not, not, we have no information about interior of the set. Maybe it's not empty, yeah? But we can arrange this, we can arrange this in the following way. We can take, for any n, we can take fn prime, special notation, uh, it is by definition fn minus interior of fn. Some new set, some new set. So what, what do we see? Uh, what can we say immediately? Definitely the set is closed, yeah? Since from closed set, we subtract some open set. So we have that Fn prime is again closed. And, uh, and uh, um, more or less clearly that interior, indeed it's clearly, that interior uh, of the set Fn prime is empty, yeah? But definitely this Fn prime is not empty. So we have closed set. We have closed set with empty interior. Do, we, do you see that interior is empty? Since we, if we suppose that there is something inside, then of course it will contradict to the definition of the set. And definitely, definitely it's not empty. Why? Because uh, at least boundary points 
uh, will belong to the set boundary points of this FM. Now, and let's take GN. GN, uh, G immediately. We will take G as a union of FN interior and from one to infinity. Maybe some of them are empty. Yeah, if all of them are empty, then immediately we have contradic contradiction to the bare theorem. Yeah? Now, but so we can suppose that some of them are non-empty, and we have here a finite or countable union of open sets, which is definitely open. Yeah? So we have this open set. We have this open set. Uh, this is definition for collection of open sets. And now what we will do? Let's uh, let, we will consider with you, we will apply bear theorem with you, not to this interval, but for some new complete metric space. We will introduce this new metric space, and this new metric space uh, will be interval 0, 1, minus the set G. So, of course, by the Morgan law, if you take the, the remember my law, yeah? If you subtract the union, it is, of course, the same as <coughs> we will have, this is the union of this Fn prime. Fn prime from one to infinity. It's clear, yeah? Because the, the Morgan law shows this representation. Now look, uh, so, what, what do we see about this x? We see that this x, this x, Definitely, it is closed set. Since again, from closed set, we subtract open. This is closed, this is subset, bounded subset of compact sets. So definitely, this is, uh, because of closeness, we have that X is complete. X is definitely complete. What is more, X is compact, yeah? So X is complete. And then, in order to show that this representa representation is not possible, it's enough to see that, uh, all of these sets are nowhere dense. Then we will have contradiction, yeah? So this once more. We will apply bare theorem not to this interval, but for this special uh, set, a complete metric space that we constructed with you. Now, let us see, let us see that they are rare sets. We will do this in the following way. Uh, first step, the first step, we see with you that X has no, has no, isolated points, isolated points, except maybe, except maybe uh, zero and one. So, of course, this zero and this one, they may be isolated points since we, uh, for example, this is first set F1, this second set F2, uh, but <coughs> if these two points are isolated, then we will remove them, yeah? We will lose compactness, but we will not lose completeness. That uh, it will be again of the second category. It's clearly, yeah. If you take set of second category and uh, remove uh, from this set point or two points, definitely it will be again second category. So without loss of generality, we can suppose <coughs> that these two points uh, they are not problem points for us. But now look. So uh, we have some point A. We have some point A in X, we try to show that this point is not isolated. Why this point is not isolated? If it belongs to X, then we will have that there exists some N such that A belongs to Fn prime. And if A belongs to Fn prime, if suppose that is isolated. That is, if this point A is isolated, then what do we have? We have, we understand with you, does it mean isolated points? It means that here there is some interval without point of X, yes? And here there exists some interval without point of X. If they do not belong to X, they, be, they belong to G. They belong to G, yes? If they belong to G, this very concrete interval, we take, the, 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 uh, then we will have, then this interval belongs, this is, these points are from AI interior, from interior of some closed set Fi. But since this is an uh, adherent point, this is adherent point, uh, we have that A belongs to Fi, yeah? But it means that uh, I and uh, N are the same, yes? I and N are the same. Questions? Okay, is it clear? Yeah. And now look, but the same for the right side, uh, for the left side, yes? For the left side, this is again, we have something uh, from uh, this is something from Fj interior. But by the same arguments as the adherent point, we have the J equals N. 
The four, what do we have? We have this point from Fn, and some internal from Fn, this internal from Fn. So the, 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 we have, from here, we have that A belongs to Fn interior now, yeah? Since we take, we have internal containing this Fn, and it, of course it will contradict to our choice, since uh, it, does, it cannot belong. But we have that A uh, does not belong. It belongs to Fn minus Fn interior. So this is contradiction. This is contradiction. <clears throat> Please, your questions about this first argument. So we have, we have that X has no isolated points, maybe, except this and this one. Why? No problem. Come on. Uh, uh, so, <coughs> ah, why this is important for us? I'd like to recall you that if we have uh, anything, for example, Euclidean space, yeah, and here we have this isolated point, then this isolated point in this X, in this X, it will be immediately just one point, it will be of the second category, since it is open and closed in itself, yeah? That is interior, interior of, of in house door space, all singletons are closed, but in this special metric space, this, we, we understand with you that interior of this point is not empty. Therefore, we have that uh, this point is of the second category, so definitely we have to avoid the situation, yeah? And we will do this since we have no isolated points. We have no isolated, that's not all. And now look at this, this second, the last step. What do we want to prove? We want to prove that F uh, n uh, prime interior, interior, or maybe I will write now in this way, interior is empty. empty. But <laughs> interior, of course, we have to consider with respect to x, with respect to x. Since we are going to apply Bayer theorem to this x, yes, not to the interval 0, 1. Now, uh, so by contradiction, uh, uh, so what, what does it mean interior is empty? It means the following. It means the following, that for any point A from Fn prime and for any epsilon, for any epsilon, the ball, we have that ball with respect to x, with respect to x of A epsilon, is not, is not inside of Fn prime, yeah? So we, indeed we want to prove this one, that uh, interior, interior is empty. Now we will do this, we will do this here. Uh, again by contradiction, if, if we have that let, 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 by contradiction, we have that there exists A, there exists A uh, in Fn prime in some, there exists N, uh, there exists Epsilon such that B, uh, B, X, A, Epsilon inside of Fn prime. That what, what, what do we have? We have the picture, this is A, this is A plus Epsilon, this is A minus Epsilon, A minus Epsilon, but A is not isolated point with respect to X. Therefore, here we have a lot of sequence, sequence array points, yeah? Sequence array points, there are some points AJ, AJ from X. But since A is inside of Fn prime, A is inside of Fn prime, so we see that this all, uh, and we have this embedding, yeah? Then we have that this AJ also from Fn prime, for all J, starting from some number, yeah? For all uh, large enough J j more or equal than j0. <coughs> so we have sequence from this same set. But as we discussed with you at the beginning, definitely interior of the set is empty interior with respect to the line, yeah? with respect to this interval. Therefore, here there are, uh, there are intervals, there are points from g, yeah? interior. What does it mean that interior of closed set is empty, it means that exterior is everywhere dense, everywhere dense, yeah? It means that here, not only there are some intervals here from G, yeah? But indeed any point, any point can be approximated by intervals like this. This is just uh, the fact of density, uh, fact that this, <coughs> this is empty, you see? Now, but if they are from FG, FJ, from G, but what is G? G it is union of F, K interior, yeah? This is definition. And now, look, uh, so what do we have? 
we have that to, to, to only option, only option that is if, if we suppose that here there are some points from F M uh, interior and M is not equal N, then we immediately will have a contradiction, yes? Since then we will have this uh, boundary point and this boundary point will be the sum point B will be from F M prime and M is not the same as N. Of course it contradicts to that one because they are disjoint. All these sets definitely are disjoint. This is disjoint decomposition, yeah? Disjoint decomposition. Now look, therefore we have that all these intervals, we have that all these intervals, uh, intervals are from Fn interior. Again, it's impossible. Then we will have that the whole, we have that the whole this set, uh, a minus epsilon, a plus epsilon, belongs to Fn. Therefore, it means that again, a belongs to Fn interior, which is impossible, since it belongs to, to this difference, to this difference. So, please, your questions. This is good proof in the sense that uh, in some situations, we, if you want to apply this Baer theorem, we can do this, but for some, another set, not the set given beforehand, but uh, after some modification, we can do this. So please, your questions, you know? Yeah, later. Okay, look at this proof again at home, and maybe if you will have questions, then ask me <coughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow, we give, again, we'll have lectures with this. So, that there is we prove that X has no isolated points. We prove that all the sets Fn are rarely sets. Therefore, we have that X is of the first category. It's impossible since X is uh, complete, contradicts to this is contradiction to Baer theory. Okay? Now, that's not all with the problems. I want to consider with you today, we are late according to our syllabus, but I want to consider with you to another interesting decomposition. This, uh, but now maybe without, pr without proof, only I will give you a sketch. The second decomposition is the following. Uh, so, interval cannot be represented as a, open or closed, cannot be represented as a countable union of closed sets, non-empty closed sets. But, it can be represented as uncountable union of perfect set, perfect set. So, we have, we have that, we have that uh, interval 0, 1, or any other interval, can be represented as a union of sets A lambda, but uncountable, uncountable. Lambda belongs to some parameter. Trivially, it is an uh, uncountable union, for the uncountable union of singletons, yeah? But it's interesting that we can arrange this decomposition in such a way that all A lambda are perfect set perfect sets, what does it mean? It means that they are closed and without isolated points, yeah? Definition, we have that A lambda is closed set and we have that uh, it does not contain isolated points, okay? So we have <coughs> decomposition of that form, decomposition of that form. Now look, what is the idea? Idea here is uh, to use ternary expansions. Ternary expansions. Let us consider the following uh, decomposition. So what we have uh, for any t, for any t from the interval 0, 1, we have, we have decomposition as a, for counter sets. It seems to me this. Huh? Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. Since otherwise just take all of them are empty set. So we have that they are disjoint. They are disjoint and of course, oh, no, they are not empty since uh, it seems to me definition of perfect sets, it's supposed that they are not empty, okay? So definitely they are disjoint, thank you, since otherwise it's easy to do. Now look, we have this ternary decomposition, a k, three minus k, and k from one to infinity. k from one to infinity. And uh, what are a k? A k belongs to the set, maybe zero, maybe one, or maybe two. So usual ternary decomposition of the point, yeah? It can be done. What is counter set? Counter set, we, we exclude one. We consider decompositions only with zero and two, then we will have usual counter set. But 
uh, the, oh, it seems to me we also can discuss this with you somehow. Uh, here, this representation is not unique, it's not good, yeah? In what sense it's not unique? For example, if you take uh, point zero and then two, 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 of course now uh, I, I will, uh, we will consider with you this correspondence between point T and the sequence A1, A2, etc. yeah? Now, let's look at the sequence, zero, two, 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 etc., etc., two in period. So what, what is the sequence? The sequence uh, is the following. We have two, this is zero divided by three, yeah? So this is t equals two over nine plus two over 27, 27 plus etc. So this is two over nine, and here we have one plus one over three plus one over nine, etc., etc. So this is geometric progression. This is two over nine, and the sum of geometric progression, it is one, one minus one over three. So this is three over two, two over nine, three over two. So this is one over three, yeah? So one over three, it is this number in this um, ternary decomposition. On the other hand, if you take t one over three, then of course, more simple form, it is one and zero, 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 yeah? It's the same as for decimal. For decimal, we have the same situation, yeah? Nine in period. Therefore, we will suppose, uh, we will exclude this two in period, yeah? Let, uh, there is no, there is no two in period, period in period, except one. Uh, except point one. Of course, point one, it is two, two, and two, etc. okay? So, in, uh, provided this restriction, we have unique correspondence between points on the interval and the sequences of coefficients, yeah? Okay, so this is T. Now look, what we will do. Let us consider that we do the following function. Uh, let function phi, phi, uh, it maps from the interval 0, 1 into interval 0, 1, as we will see with you sur in surjective way, be such that <coughs> we interrupt the function. And now I want, okay. Mm, okay, I will consider with you some examples in order to feel how does it work. Uh, so, phi for, for t, which is a1, a2, etc., etc., for the sequence, we take, we take phi of t equals b1, b2, etc., etc. So the question, how to define the sequence in, in the following way. We have that b1 equals a1. Now b2 equals maybe, wait a minute, a1, it seems to me. It's better if I look, a1. This is a1. Now B2 equals A3, A3, if we have that A1 plus if A2 equals zero, A2 equals zero or A2 equals two. And B2 equals uh, two minus A3, minus A3, if we have that this is one, yeah? A2 is one. Indeed, indeed we will uh, consider, look at least at the picture, we have A1, A2, <laughs> A3, A4, A5, etc., etc. This is T. Now, this is B1. And uh, uh, this second row, it will be defined only by, only, it's not quite good. So only this number will be, will give us the value B, B, yeah? So here we will take B2 or maybe 2 minus A3. Now, for B3, we will take maybe A5 or 2 minus A5, yeah? In this way, we will do that. So, what is the choice? What is the choice? It will depend on even numbers, yeah? So, what is in general? In general, we have that Bn equals A2n minus 1, A2n minus 1, yeah? If, if we have that A2 plus A4 plus etc., only even, only even, plus a to n minus 2 is even, even number. And we have, we have that bn equals 2 minus a to n minus 1. If we have that a2 plus etc., all this stuff uh, is odd, 
is odd, okay? So then using this formula, we can see that this is a function. This is a function, and this function is well-defined. The function is well-defined. Uh, now let's look, uh, let's consider some simple, simple examples of how does it work, this function. For example, if you take t, ah, def, first of all, definitely it's not injective, yeah? Because uh, the sum is even, uh, this is zero, maybe two. Or in both situations, we have the same value, yeah? So definitely it's not injective. Now, for example, for example, if you take t equals uh, zero, two, zero, two, zero, two, etc. Then what do we have for phi of t? Huh? Your suggestions? The first coefficient, the first term is zero, yes? The second is zero, since this number is even. The third is again zero, this, the sum is even, etc. yeah? So what is this? This is identically zero. Zero, maybe zero, zero, uh, zero, zero, etc., etc., okay? So, but if you take here all zeros, of course, it again will be zero, yeah? Now, another example. Another example, if you take t, for example, of that form t, it is uh, 1, any a2, 1, any a4, 1, any a6, etc., etc., then what do we have for phi of t? Uh, the, of course, uh, we can write this in, in standard uh, form, yeah, this concrete number. Now, this is first term is 1, yeah? Huh? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's not quite good. It's better to write in this way. It is 1, 1, 1, etc., 1. Why? Since now these numbers, they are not important, yeah? Because what is Bn? Bn. It is a to n minus, maybe it's better to write in this way. It is a to n minus 1, or maybe 2 minus a to n minus 1. But this is 1. Therefore, in both situations, this is always 1. It's not important. What is the sum of even terms, okay? What is this, by the way? 1 over 3 plus 1 over 9, etc., etc. Your suggestions? Huh? Uh, this is 1 over 3 plus 1 over 9 plus 1 over 27. How are you in calculation of sum of geometric progression? This is 1 over 2, okay? This is 1 over 2 because it is 1 over 3, and here 1 minus 1 over 3. Multiply by 3, then you will see. Okay, so there is some function, yeah? No, not some, but very concrete, exact function, okay? Now, how this function is related, is related to our problem in the following way. Now we will introduce this set. Let's introduce the set in the following way. Uh, let, let, okay. A tau, by definition, it is phi minus 1 of tau for tau from 0 to 1. Okay, there is, we take any number, tau. And then we consider pre-image, 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 yeah? Now, then, then, then what do we have? We have some properties. The first property, uh, the first property is the following. We will have from here that it is... Um, uh, surjective. We have that a tau is not empty for any tau in this interval. So it just means surjectivity, yeah? That is, that is phi is surjective as a function from 0, 1 to 0, 1. Now, it's easy to see. Uh, the second part, b, okay, uh, the second part, b, that a tau has no isolated points, isolated points. And the last part, C, is the following. Uh, we have that uh, a tau is closed. We have that the set is closed. Ah, wait a minute, maybe it's better in the following way. It's better to write the following. Phi is continuous, phi is continuous. Then from here, from continuity, we will have by three that a tau is closed. Why, by the way? Uh, because uh, what does it mean? Uh, why, why it is closed? Uh, since then, we, will, we, we can consider that 
uh, since it is a kernel, since it is a kernel, a kernel of what? Of some function psi, which is uh, phi minus tau, yeah? Phi of tau minus tau. We, we have phi of tau minus tau. If, uh, what does it mean that, uh, that something belongs to a tau? It means that phi of a of tau, or maybe it's better to write it this way, uh, phi of a equals tau for any a from a tau, yeah? By definition. Therefore, we have that this is just the kernel. This is the kernel of this function. But function is continuous. If we prove that phi is continuous, then this difference is continuous. We understand with you that kernel of continuous operator, continuous function, always is closed, yeah? So this is closed set. Huh? It's not it's not important. For any for any continuous kernel kernel always is closed. Wait a minute. And another conclusion from this continuity, we will have the following, that if tau is not the same as mu, then we have, or maybe it's better to write in this way, a tau uh, a mu is disjoint for any tau which is not mu. Now, please, once more your question. I say in the kernel, there may be other elements maybe. Of course, the kernel, it's not a point. Kernel, it is some set. But this set may be large enough. But set this always is closed if mapping is continuous, just by continuity, OK? So what does it mean, closeness? Closeness means the following. We have that uh, xn from the set, xn convergence to x in topology. Then we want to have xn from some set f. Then we want to show that f x also in f. It means closeness, yeah? But by continuity, if this is zero and operator is continuous, making this function continuous, definitely, oh, you understand? Okay, nice. Now look, since we have no time, I will give you, ah, so for first, its fact is rather trivial, yeah? Rather simple. So maybe we will show with you only first, and then I recommend you to check at home the, the second and the third. Uh, the second is also, can be done more or less easily, clearly, what should we do? Uh, has no isolated, okay, let's start from A. Uh, indeed, for A, what do we have for A? Uh, for A, we have the following, so, it is surjective, surjective. So, we take any B, uh, for, for any uh, B1, etc., etc., Bn, etc., etc., we can take what? We can take t equals, equals, uh, put all zeros, all, all two, it's not so important. We have b1, zero, b2, zero, b3, zero, et cetera, et cetera. So pff, there is some t, then, then it's not difficult to see, then f of t equals this tau. I forgot to write, then this is tau, okay? Clearly, because all of them will be just images, yeah? All sums, since sums are even, sums of all these even terms is even, yeah? So for first, it's very easy to see. For second, uh, you can check yourself, it's not very difficult. That is, you can play with the tail, uh, with the tail of expansion A1, etc., An, etc. So what does it mean that uh, no related points? It means the following, we take a from a tau, a from a tau, and we try to show that this is limit point for another points from a tau, yeah? And this another points, this another points aj, can be constructed just from this a, but uh, with suitable change of the tail. If you change the tail, you will have another point, you see? But we can change this tail for, uh, of course, we mean convergence in Euclidean topology, yeah? And if you will change this tail for large enough numbers, then this will be rather close. So check it, it's not difficult. And this is also, it can be checked. This is more long, but I, I, I will not do this. Right? If, this problem, if this problem is interesting for you, I recommend you to check continuity. Be careful here, since uh, continuity means the following. We have that uh, some A1J a2j, etc., etc., converges in Euclidean 
uh, in Euclidean metric, it's better to write not in this way. So this is some Tj, which is this one, converges in Euclidean metric to some T, which is A1, A2, etc. It does not mean, it does not mean that A n j converges to A n for j goes to infinity because of the possibility to take two, not in period, but the long long intervals containing only two, okay? But it's, it's possible to show that it's not a big problem and the function is continuous. Now, once more, by continuity we have that it's closed. Since it has no isolated points, it is perfect. And by continuity again, it's clearly, yeah? Since if, no, clearly that continuous function, this is a level, this um, level sets, level sets. That is here function takes value mu, and here function take value tau. Of course, the sets are disjoint, yeah? Definitely. So we have disjoint sets. So we have this interesting decomposition. Okay? Okay. If no questions, then the last decomposition. The last decomposition, uh, it's in, there are some interesting examples to understand about what is the structure of the line and uh, what is the category, how to use this technique, bare theorem. The last decomposition <coughs> is the following. Zero, one can be represented as a union of two sets. Yeah? Uh, in, we will consider with you the concept of measure, theory of measure in details, but we understand with you from the previous course and the, from discussion in the first lectures that measure it is additive, measure it is additive for these joint sets, measure of the union, the sum of measures, yes. And what does it mean that Lebesgue measure is zero of some set? It means that we can cover for any epsilon, we can cover the set by sequence of intervals with common length smaller than epsilon, yes? Now look, so what, what is this decomposition? Uh, decomposition is the following, that we have that measure of A, Lebesgue measure of A, is one, but a is of the first, uh, first category, first category. And uh, by, since the sum of lengths, sum of measures of this is zero, therefore we will have that measure of B is zero, but what, what can we say? Definitely B of, of the second category, because if B is first category, then we will have that union of the first, but in plural is the second category, okay? So look. This is an interesting example. It shows that Lebesgue measure, it does not correspond to category arguments. Uh, the first category, it means that small set in the sense, in sense of category, yeah? The second category means that set is large. But we see that it is small in the sense of category, but very large in this in, in, on the set in the sense of measure, okay? Interesting example. So we will consider this example and we will use these arguments in the next lecture. So please try to understand this. So what we will do? We will take set of rational on the interval 0, 1 and enumerate all of them from 1 to infinity. We understand that this set is countable, yeah? Enumerable. Now, and we will consider for any i, j, uh, which are natural numbers, we will take uh, interval i j, interval i j. It is r j minus two minus i minus j, r j plus two minus i minus j. It is just uh, uh, interval with center at point r j with this rational point with this rather small radius, yeah? Since um, for large enough j, this is small number. Interval. Now, we will consider, let's take set G. G, which is union of I, I, J, for all J from 1 to infinity. Countable union of intervals, of open intervals. Uh, we have, we have definitely that G, this is open set, this is open set, and definitely this G contains set of rational, of course, yeah? Since it's something larger, it's a set of rational and some, some other, so uh, it contains uh, all, all these intervals, so we will have it. So it's covering, definitely it is covering of set of rational, yeah? Now, let B, let B 
will be intersection of this G, uh, wait a minute, this is of course GI, since we have, we have that uh, for fix I, for fix I, this is some open sets, and if we will enlarge I, then the sets are smaller, smaller, and smaller, and we will take intersection of all these sets from one to infinity. So this is some set. And uh, as, uh, we, uh, as in the previous lecture, I'd like to recall you that uh, this uh, countable union, countable union, uh, countable intersection of open sets, this is so-called G delta set, G delta set, okay? So once more, we have Rj, we have one interval, then we have another interval, third interval, and for fix i, we consider some set, which is countable union of intervals, and then we take intersection of all of them. Uh, this b is from g delta, it's not, that's not all, and we can write also that this b contains rational points, yeah? Why? Because rational i inside of any g, inside of any g, therefore inside of this intersection, yes? Now, now we will use monotonicity of the measure, so we can say that measure of set GI, measure of set GI, it is less or equal, of course, of course, definitely these intervals, definitely they are not disjoint, yeah, because this interval, any interval, it will contain a lot of other rational points and a lot of other points for these intervals, but we have bound from above. So we, we can put here the length of this interval, yeah? Measure of this interval, the length of this interval, and length of this interval, it is just two multiplied by this half of length. So this is two, one minus i minus j, and we have to take summation from j to infinity. So what is this? This is two, one minus i, it is the common term, common coefficient, yeah? And here we have the sum of two minus j. What is the sum from one to infinity? It's just one, yeah? So we have this small measure, the larger i, smaller measure, smaller measure of this open set, yeah? And uh, what can we say about measure of b? Measure of b definitely less or equal that measure of this set for any i, because it is inside, yeah? It's intersection, it is intersection. And there is no i on the left side, therefore, we have that measure of set B is zero, okay? So we have some zero set in the sense of measure, yeah? Zero set which contains set of rational, but as we will see now, not only rational, it contains much more. Now, I want to save it, so I will erase, or maybe I will erase this one. Uh, now, uh, so what, it's, it's enough to prove. It's enough to prove that the, the uh, B is of the second category, but it's difficult, to, as usual, it's much more easy to prove that set, some set is of the first category than, than of the second, uh, since we can show explicitly this representation as a countable union of rare sets, if, okay? So let us, let's, let's look at A. Let's look at A. Here, here we have A, it is uh, interval minus B, yeah? It is interval zero, one minus B. But what is B? B, it is intersection of G i from one to infinity. And again, again, we can, we will use this De Morgan law, yeah? By De Morgan law, it is the union of F i, one to infinity, and what is F i? F i, of course, it is zero, one minus the set G i, definitely closed, yeah? So the set A, of course, it's not strange that A belongs to F sigma, countable union of closed sets, since by the Morgan law, definitely set complementary to G delta is, must be F sigma, yeah? Now, it's definitely F sigma. But, uh, but this is from this representation, we see that A is of the first category because it's countable union of closed sets. It's enough to show that any set has empty interior, yeah? Let us show, let's show that Fi interior is empty. But indeed this is more or less clearly, yeah? Why this more or less clearly? Uh, since, uh, indeed, uh -huh. indeed, what do we have? We have that the set Q is dense, 
on this interval, yeah? On this interval 0, 1. And we have, and we have that it does not belong to Q. So it's the set Q, uh, okay, see, F, F, the F, I does not, oh, it's enough, intersected to Q is empty for any I, for any I, why? Since Q is inside of G, I for any I, yes? It's in the complement. Set of rational is in the complement. Therefore, this intersection is empty. But if this intersection is empty, and if you suppose that there exists some point from Fi, which is interior point, what does it mean, interior point? It means that there exists some epsilon such that this interval will be completely inside of F. Of course, we will have contradiction, since this interval contains a lot of rational points. A lot of rational points. It's impossible, yeah? For any epsilon, we have that A minus epsilon A plus epsilon definitely is not inside of Fi since, why? Since this interval minus epsilon A plus epsilon contains, contains many rational points, countably many rational points, okay? Therefore, we have uh, that, so, Please, your question, you have to understand these arguments, since uh, there are many problems which uh, can be reduced to arguments of that type, yeah? There is uh, category, category arguments. Now, thus, we have that A is of the first category by definition, countable union of closed sets. Now, measure of A, since measure is additive, measure is additive, equals 1 minus measure of B equals 1, and the B definitely is the second category, as we discussed at the beginning, since the, it cannot be first category, since the union of the sets is uh, second category. Therefore, this Lebesgue measure, it does not correspond to category, to this topological concept, okay? Uh, and the, there is a good book, Axtobi, Axtobi, if the subject is interesting for you, then I can recommend you the book of Oxtobi in our library, Measure and Category. Measure and Category, QA 312. Uh, and there is nice discussion about measures which are uh, consistent with the category. Indeed, for any sigma algebra, for any sigma algebra, uh, so measure is given. It's possible to introduce topology there in such a way that the measure will be category measure. So what does it mean category measure? Category measure, it is just if some set uh, A is of the first category, first category, then we need that measure of A must be zero. No, not Lebesgue, of course, but this measure. So Lebesgue measure is not category measure. And unfortunately, but this is a life, that it, it, it is not very related to topological structure of the line. Uh, for example, for example, what do we have for Lebesgue measure? So this is one problem that this small set in the sense of category may have very larger measure. Uh, or another situation, we have, if we have closed set, yeah, if F is closed, then measure of the set in gen Lebesgue measure. In general, is not the same as measure of the interior. If we have that open set, some G, set G is open, then again we have in general that measure of this open set is not the same as measure of the closure, yeah? We can include boundary, but then in general we can en enlarge the set in such way that measure will be larger. And this is not very difficult uh, if we, you, if you remember that uh, example that we considered with you one, uh, one or two weeks ago, that, for example, on the interval, there exists counter type set, yeah? Counter type set on the interval zero, one, such that measure of C uh, is positive, yeah? Is positive. But this is, we constructed this with you. But counter set, counter set, it's just such that interior of the set is empty, yeah? One of the point of definition of counter set, yeah? Interior is empty. Therefore, we have closed set, but uh, measure of the interior is zero. Measure of itself, not zero, yeah? Now, what is set G? Set G, it is zero, one, 
minus this C. So what do we see? We see that this measure of G, of course, is not 1. We have measure of G is not 1. Why? Because it is 1 minus measure of compact set, which is positive, yeah? Of counter set, which is positive. But we have that measure of closure is 1, because it's everywhere dense. The set G is everywhere dense on the interval 0, 1, okay? So, again, I attract your attention to this bare theorem, to arguments, which are rather useful. You have to understand them. Please look again at especially this example. Since we will, I will give you, we will consider with you some in other situations when arguments of that type can be applied, okay? And keep in mind that small in the sense of category, it is not the same as small in the sense of measure, unfortunately. Okay, see you tomorrow. Yerin, görüşürüz. Evet.